The defining shape of women's fashion during the Civil War depended on the structure provided by the undergarments, most notably the hoop skirt known as a crinoline. By the 1860s, these underskirts were made from hoops of steel. These hoops were riveted to cotton tapes. The flexibility of the tapes allowed the hoops to swing freely and also collapse upon themselves for ease of maneuvering and storage. The open section at the front allows the woman to step into and out of her hoops once the waistband is unfastened. Once the skirts were held out from the body by this metallic scaffolding, it became imperative that women wear some form of undergarment to protect the legs. Because the hoops could swing out like a bell, there was some risk of the entire structure tipping up and revealing the legs. The pantalets offered a defense against indecency in such a situation. The drawers consisted of separate pieces for each leg that were attached to a waistband but not stitched together at the crotch. The very wide skirts of the mid-century were paired with very small waists created by the corset. The corsets of the 1860s were designed to pinch in the waist but could remain relatively short because the skirts completely concealed the hips. Women would wear a chemise under the corset to keep it clean. The next layer after the corset would be a corset cover. The cover would smooth out and conceal the lines created by the corset. This example of a corset cover and petticoat were worn together with this sheer cotton wedding dress. The cover closes with hooks and eyes down the front and is boned. There's an additional underblouse that is part of the dress itself because the outermost layer is so sheer. The petticoat served a similar function as the corset cover, that is to say, it smoothed out any harsh lines and edges created by the steel hoops. The sheerness of the skirt meant that the petticoat would be visible underneath, providing a clean white underlayer.